We are going to create this amortization schedule in Microsoft Excel. In order to open up Microsoft Excel, there's many different approaches, but probably the surefire way is to go to All Programs, go up to Microsoft Office, and within the Microsoft Office listing there, you should see Microsoft Office Excel, and you click on it. When Microsoft Excel opens up, you'll notice that it provides a number of different menus at the top. These buttons here we call ribbons, and within each ribbon you have various groupings of menus that you can use that relate to that particular ribbon. So for example, under the Home ribbon you see it, you can change your font, alignment of text, uh, various things such as that. And another thing you'll notice in Microsoft Excel is that it's a grid system. The columns are denoted by the letters A through Z, and then once it gets beyond Z, then it becomes, let's just go over there so you can see that. You'll see that it becomes A, 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 B, A, C, and it keeps going. And if I go end over, end and then the right key, uh, you'll see it goes to I, V, so you can tell that there's a number of different columns in an Excel workbook. If I hit the Home button, I will actually go back to cell A1 uh, when I'm on that row. The rows are numbered 1 through, and since this is currently an Excel 2003 file, even though I opened up Excel 2007, uh, the way my system set up is it saves it as a 2003, you'll see if I go end down that there are 65,536 rows. If I hit the Control Home button, that puts me back to the A1 cell. So you'll notice as we refer to different cells in Microsoft Excel, we will refer to the column first and the row second. The first thing I want to do is I want to save this file. I'm going to go up to the Office button, choose Save As, and you'll see right now the way my computer set up it says Save As Type Excel 97 2003 workbook. I don't want that. I want it to actually be an Excel workbook, which makes it an Excel 2007 file. The name of this workbook will be Fixed Payment Amortization Schedule. And I want to save that right now, let's say on my, uh, I'm, I'm going to move it into my um, 232B folder. So I click on My Documents, Counting 232B, and I will put it in uh, this basic directory here. So I choose Save. One of the things we're going to do uh, in setting up our workbook is to follow some basic formatting rules of thumb. When we set up workbooks, we normally we're, are going to have certain variables that are going to change based on the user's desires and then you're going to have the results based on those variables. So we tend to set up a data section and an answer section. Within the data section we'll pr mainly have variables and we'll highlight those cells to indicate that those are variables that the user would input. If it's something that the user won't be inputting we just leave it as a, a, a white background. In order to compute the monthly mortgage payment for a fixed payment calculation, we need to know certain information. So let's assume this is a home mortgage. So we will need the home price. We'll need the down payment percentage. Uh, when uh, companies lend borrowers money to purchase a home, they will usually require that the borrower put some money put some money down. So although the home price may be, let's say, $500,000, the user might have to put in 20% of that. So the, the loan amount would certainly be less than the home price. That provides a little safety for the lender. We can then calculate the down payment dollar amount based on the information uh, given so far. Another piece of information we can then um, compute is the loan amount which will be the difference between the home price and the down payment. Next we will ask for the interest rate and the loan period and we'll ask that that be put in in years. Uh, we don't want it input in months and we'll put it in uh, and then we can compute the payment. For example, home price. 
So what I did is I just simply uh, moved my mouse up to cell C8. I clicked on it once, and that allows me to start typing in any number. So let's assume this home price is $500,000. Next thing we're going to do is ask for the down payment. Now you can either type in 20 and then put the percent symbol, such as that, or you can put in 0.2 and it will convert that to 20%. You just need to make sure you're aware that 0.2 is equivalent to 20%. You just move the decimal over two points and put a percentage on the end. The down payment then, in dollar terms, would have to be the home price times the down payment percentage. Now you'll notice what I didn't do, and what I strongly encourage you not to do, is you don't just type the numbers 500,000 directly in this down payment cell and then multiply by 0.2. Although that will be correct, if the user later changes their mind and says, no, it's a $600,000 loan, you'll notice that the down payment didn't change. And the answer is because it doesn't, the reason uh, that didn't change is because it simply doesn't refer to the home price cell of C8 and the down payment cell of C9. The way to bring this formula up, if you wanted to see that formula again, you can just click on cell C10, and then you hit the F2 button. That's the edit button. It allows you to edit that. Another thing you can do is simply delete the cell and start over. So I'm going to go equals C8, just by clicking on it, times C9 by clicking on it, and you'll see that comes out to a down payment of 120000 So let's say later on they change the down payment to 30% you'll notice that the down payment dollar amount changed. Next, the loan amount can be computed by referring to the home price minus the down payment percentage. 